welcome friends today we'll be talking about the gas chromatography so the gas chromatography is the separation technique in which we use the gas as the mobile fixture so in this technique the sample components to be separated are vaporized these are vaporized and these are carried by the inner gases that is the gas and these are carried to the cooling and these are separated due to the polarity in the cooling and these are detected so in the gas chromatography so the gas are used as the mobile phase so the mainly used gas is the that is the inner gases so the inner gases are mainly used in the gas chromatography so the inner gases that is used in the gas chromatography are the helium that is the nitrogen and that is the argon so these are the inner gases that is used in the gas chromatography so the reason why you use the inner gases or the inactive gases is that these gases doesn't take part in the chemical reaction so whenever we add the sample component the sample component will have no reaction in, with this uh, with this uh, gas so we use this gas as the carrier gas so these are the mobile phase so in the diagram you can see a representative diagram of the gas chromatography so here is the sample in here is the carrier gas in so in this way we have to uh, this is the path for uh, for the carrier gas so the gases like the helium nitrogen and argon will follow this pathway this will travel like this one so next here is the sample injection point so we will inject the sample through the injection so we we'll inject the sample component here so this is the this is overall the this is called overall the injector oven so as we know there are a lot of the compounds that is not volatile at the normal uh, at the normal temperature so the compound has to be heated in order to make the compound volatile so in in this uh, gas chromatography we use the oven so this is the coulomb oven this is the injector oven and this is the detector oven so we use we, we put the sample here so we inoculate the sample when we inoculate the sample the sample are vaporized so samples are vaporized we use the liquid this the liquid uh, as the sample okay the samples are the liquid then after that is vaporized you know and this vaporized uh, this vaporized samples are traveled or that was transported by the carrier gas into the cooling so this is the cooling so now what is the temperature of this oven the questions may be that one the temperatures of the you know oven is about uh, 50 degree more than that of the least boiling point of the uh, you know uh, least boiling point of the volatile compound so this is the 50 degree more then that of the volatile compound okay now whenever we inject the sample the samples are changed or vaporized the samples are vaporized so it will be changed into the into the gas so this carrier gas will travel this into the cooling so how the separation takes place the separations will take place on the basis of the polarity so on the basis of the polarity the separations will be taken place so If, so what happens is that if this is the coulomb you know this is the coulomb and in the coulomb there is the coulombs uh, is attached or this is packed with the uh, with the polar compounds these are packed with the polar compounds similarly if this is the coulomb so the coulombs are packed uh, these are packed with the these are packed with the polar compounds so what happens is that if the any of the non polar and there will be the polar so suppose this is the polar and the non polar okay so the non polar will not attach to this one so it won't attach to the polar compound of uh, this uh, cooling so the non polar won't attach with this so it will travel fast so but the polar will attach with this one uh, so it will travel less so this is the basic things of the separations 
in the colon. So typically if we see the colon, so what is the length of the colon? So what is the diameter? What is the length of the colon? So that may be the question mark. So basically the colons are divided into the two types. One is the pack colon and the next, next is the capillary colon. So there is the one is the pack colon, next is the capillary colon. So in the pack colon, so as I already so, to, uh, uh, told you, so the pack colons are packed with the diatomaceous earth. So these are one is the paculin in which the diatomaceous earth are packed. So next is the capillary colon. So the capillary colon are divided into the two types. So the capillary colon are divided into the two types. So one will be the wall coated, one will be the wall coated open tubular. So this is also uh, called in the short form that is called the WCOT and next is the support coated support coated open tubular that is called the SCOT so there are the two types of the capillary colon so this capillary colons are about 100 meters in length so these are about 100 meters in length so you know in the open coated uh, in the open coated uh, sorry wall coated open tubular the stationary phase the stationary phase are coated in the walls so you know suppose this is the silica so this is the silica so or the uh, silica so uh, this is the uh, this is the column so in the column's wall so the stationary phases are coated so this is called the wall coated open tubular and if you see in the support coated what happens is that in the colon there will be the support the support will be the diatomaceous earth and in the support there will be the there will be the stationary phases that is being coded so that is the differences so in the wall coded it means the low amount of the sample because it, it because it has the very you know less area and it has the more space or more area as compared to this one so you know one put it needs a very small sample to be you know uh, to be separated but it can separate the uh, more amount of the sample than the uh, wall coated one so these are the basic differences between the wall coated and the support coated so after this what happens is that the non if this if, if this is coated with the polar so this is coated with the polar so polar is stationary phase so we are going to separate the non-polar polar and the uh, this polar and the non-polar so this is the polar so what happens is that the polar compound will have the affinity with, with, the, with this polar stationary phase so this polar will absorb this polar so, uh, sample will attach to this polar stationary phase but this is the non-polar but the non-polar solute or the non-polar non -polar sample will not attach to, the, attach to this stationary phase because the stationary phase are the uh, polar and the sample is the non-polar so it won't attach so it will radially give the it will radially reach to the detector and it will give the signal so this is the basic things about this one so retention time so retention time in the cooling chromatography sorry in the this cooling chromatography or the gas chromatography is the time that is taken by the sample is the time taken by the sample uh, from the inoculation point and uh, it is the time taken by the sample to reach to this detector so it is time taken by the sample and uh, to reach to the detector from the sample inoculation point so now what is the death time here so retention time is the that's that this one so the death time is uh, the time in which the time of the the time that is taken by the solute to reach from the uh, to reach from the sample inoculation point to the detector is same as the uh, as the time taken by the solvent that is the solvent or the gas the uh, taken by the gas to reach from this you know sample injection to the detector so that time is that one. 
So if we see in the graph, so the number of ticks will uh, determine the number of the solvents or the number of the solvent or the number of the solute, sorry. The number of ticks will denote the number of this uh, sample, number of the compounds in the mixture. So if there is the three ticks, it denotes that there are the three, uh, you know, uh, three comp uh, compounds in that mixture. So the quantity of that, you know, the mixture, the quantity of the compound in a mixture can be determined by the height of the graph, by the height of this graph. You know, basically what happens is that if you are using the computer, you know, so I have used a computer, so, so if you use the computer, the computer will, you know, uh, give the area, give the area of this, uh, you know, pick. So the area is directly proportional to the quantity. So some of this, you know, uh, in some lab there will not be the facilities of the computer. In that one, they use the, you know, height of this, you know, um, uh, peak in order to determine the quantity. So this is the uh, basic things about the uh, gas chromatography.